Nina with Disney with the generic questions. Anthony, the first one's for you. What is the benefit of showcasing these characters in a six episode series versus a feature film? Um, well, you get more time with them. I mean, if you look at it, a, a six hour series is like three movies. So you get the opportunity to get to really know the characters, um, really get invested in the characters and really grow a relationship with the characters to carry forward. What is compelling about the relationship between Sam and Bucky uh, at this point after the movies that makes it worth exploring is that they are both sort of left with one another, um, essentially, uh, and in a world that um, post Steve, and they've got to figure out what they have in common and what's different between them. Sam's journey leading up to the series is him basically returning from the blip and coming home. The series picks up right when, right after the blip. So you find these characters trying to reacclimate themselves into culture, into society, into the world that they once knew five years ago. And emotionally, Sam is very split. I mean, when we last saw him, he was left with his best friend telling him that he was no longer going to be Captain America and that he needed to, you know, take on his moniker and move forward, which was the last thing Sam wanted. Um, and then the overall idea of now having to be friends with Bucky is the icing on the cake that literally leaves him emotionally spent because uh, uh, Sam and uh, Bucky's relationship kind of is tentpoled by Steve and both of their respect and admiration and love for him. So, you know, he's he's kind of uh, pulled in one direction and drawn in another. He's, you know, a 50-50 split on where exactly he is as an individual post-blip as well as an Avenger. <clears throat> Bucky's journey so far... Uh, can be chronicled really well in the films <laughs> Winter Soldier and Civil War and the Avengers. Uh, Bucky has not been healed and he is trying his best to get uh, ahead of his demons and finally um, find his place on his own, you know, in this life. Well, um, as a black man in America, the idea of representing a country that has never stood for you, taken up for you, encouraged you, built you up, afforded you opportunity, or acknowledged what you've done since you've been here makes it very difficult to put those stars and stripes on your chest and say you're representing that country. So Sam is in a position where, you know, how does he live with the idea of what his parents, his grandparents, his great grandparents, his ancestors went through? and that not be changed, acknowledged, or in any way, shape, or form, um, any uh, thought given by the country that he's supposed to protect and represent. Well, Bucky's efforts to make amends are important because it means that he has to confront his actions, his past, himself, uh, and that's the only way to move forward. And um, I think he's been you know, conveniently dodging it a little bit because there's always been a war calling him or some other effort, you know, kind of taking him away from facing that. But now uh, he's really in cold water and he's got to, it, this, is, this is sort of the fork in the road for him, this show. Malcolm Spelling, the writer, brought to the series a depth of, 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 of a very uh, deep level of understanding of these characters. He um, put us in a position where he really curated the experience for the audience, which was great. You know, um, I think his life experiences, I think his background, I think his uh, ability with uh, exposition and not making it sound like we're telling you every beat what happens really put us in a position to do the best work that we could. I mean, he's really talented when it comes to 
creating a character and being able to write in the voice of that character. There were certain times when we would do a rehearsal and we would send over like these ridiculous, like bunched up notes of what we wanted the scene to be. And two days later, we would have a great scene in the voice of the character. So he brought a level of uh, ability that none of us could have uh, matched in any way. A glimpse of what it was like to work alongside Anthony, Kari, and everyone else on the set of The Falcon and Winter Soldier. Honestly, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot about, it was a balance of trying to not laugh because sometimes things would happen that would have us laughing forever. And then other times, you know, we need to get serious. And, um, but it was a very collaborative experience. And at the end of the day, I think we were all happy with what we got. Oh, the benefit of featuring these characters on Disney Plus versus a feature film is that we get to spend much more time with them. I say the feature film is like the snack. This is like the meal. So uh, we get to get inside their lives, uh, inside their heads. We get to go on twists and turns with them because we're not racing to the finish line. I think the complexities of uh, Sam and Bucky's relationship that make it really worth exploring is that they're kind of two sides of the same coin, even though they seem completely like they're polar opposites. They have similar uh, issues that they're dealing with, which is how to be relevant in a changing world. And I think these are universal issues that we all feel as well. Sam is trying to, you know, save his family and uh, save the family business um, after the bit, blip, which has, um, of course, changed everything. And, and Bucky is uh, trying to find his way. How is he relevant? Well, he's 106 years old and the world has changed and he's having trouble fitting back in now that he has his mind back. He also is dealing with guilt issues. So the two of them are at their core kind of lonely. They've lost a friend. Uh, they both lost a very good friend. Uh, and so they also have common experience, which is uh, they fought Thanos. I mean, they thought they, they've, experienced a world that very few have. So weirdly, they have a lot of common ground and yet they're not really friends. And so they have to figure out how to become friends if, if indeed that happens. Oh my goodness, Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan bring so much to these characters. They are fun to be with, uh, they, you know, they're personal friends. So of course that history and that legacy of, of um, you know, camaraderie between them is very evident on screen. Their chemistry is fantastic. So um, they bring all of their senses of humor and, uh, and also the gravitas um, because there's plenty of times uh, that as characters, they have to be quite vulnerable. And um, both of them uh, are such incredible actors. They're able to switch gears on a dime. Um, so uh, it's really fun to watch them. Sam's life uh, is forever changed, as obviously as a result of the blip. But his life is also changed uh, when the shield is given to him. So uh, by by Steve. So he starts out by having to deal with not only his personal issues where the, the family business is failing. Um, his sister has managed to survive uh, during the blip while he was gone. Um, but he's come back and the, the, it's a changed world and a changed business and, and he has to figure out uh, what's next for his family. And also, can he actually even help his family? Um, because, you know, that's not going to be as easy either. Uh, and there's a racial component to both what that is alongside uh, the shield. He's been given the shield. Well, what is it for a black man to carry that shield? What is it for him uh, to consider the idea of what... Uh, Captain America. Is Captain America even relevant? So we uh, really go on, um, uh, we get inside Sam's life um, in a very meaningful way uh, that, that makes us really understand some of, some of who he is and, uh, and also where he lives. Bucky has come a long way. He's, got, he's gotten his mind back. Um, and uh, as a result of that, uh, he's lost. So um, on the one hand, he's, uh, he's, we hope, healed um, or more or less healed. Certainly he's grappling with uh, the fact that he remembers everything and he is in more or less in control or he's 
seemingly in control now. But that has opened up all kinds of issues, which are very, very relevant to mental health conversations. Because when you get your mind back, uh, now you've got to deal with the guilt of what you've done. And um, he has to atone for, you know, he's remembering uh, not only what he's done, but he's looking at and experiencing some of the collateral damage, which is through the people that he's um, affected, his actions have affected. So we get to see how he's coping with what the ramifications, what the consequences of violence really are. And that's something that's very unusual in any, in any um, uh, entertainment uh, where violence is part of it. We, we rarely sort of dig under the surface of what violence, uh, you know, what the consequences of violence are. So um, uh, Bucky is going to have to uh, really come to terms with, with how to get through, how to navigate um, his own uh, demons. So this series has its own unique uh, original stamp and signature. Yes, it fits into the MCU um, action look and the, and the feel, of course. Um, and that's just because it's, you know, that's baked into sort of the DNA of, of these characters. But, um, you know, the production design, the costuming, everything was much more grounded than it's been. Um, we were a location show. So we really are in the places that we, that we um, you know, have visited. It's an international thriller, so we, get, we romp around the world. Um, you know, so we really uh, tried to make it a little bit grittier, have its own unique um, signature for camera work, uh, which you know, I, I paid a lot of attention to uh, perspective, where we were, who we were with, where we are in their brains, what the camera was capturing, um, and try to make it as experiential as possible so that we really feel the perspectives of, of who, who we are um, rooting for in that moment. I think the benefit of featuring these characters, all six of them in a series, is that we get to accelerate. We get to take people who have shined in small blips and accelerate the audience's relationship with them in a way that it took maybe 10 years of Marvel movies for you to get to know each of those Avengers in a very human way. We're doing that in six hours straight. And it's a very, it builds it. I think, I think it's going to build a very intense bond and very intense relationship between the uh, fans and these characters. I think the compelling thing about Sam and Bucky's relationship is that it is tethered to the most important character in the Marvel universe, right? Which is Captain America. Um, and that that relationship is now thrown into a crucible because Cap is gone. On a, on a more profound level, as these two men who have kind of like, we've associated with each other and they've been in all kinds of battles together and they had that iconic moment in a uh, civil war, and they have a chemistry, more importantly, that makes fans feel like they know each other well. But with Steve gone, with Cap gone, what they're both realizing is we don't know each other well at all. We had a mutual best friend in common. In fact, I don't even know if we like each other. And also with Cap's decision to give him the shield. Um, that was Sam's personal struggles just at his home life and dealing with the shield was the thing I was most excited to be, uh, to, to write. Um, I did just felt supremely relevant to the times where you have this black man who is dealing with the stars and stripes and his reaction to it is appropriate for a black man, which is to push it away and have ambivalence because that symbol without Steve does not mean the same thing to Sam right that symbol without steve means oppression and 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 adversity and when you meet sam at home his roots are so deep in a black experience he comes from a long line of uh of of black fishermen which there's been documentaries about them and how they were treated by the banks and how society treated them so he has an entire identity that dictates a reaction that we would have been dishonest if he had just said, oh yeah, great, I'm gonna be Cap. 
and and not challenge it. Um, I also think the personal story to me was exciting because it was so rooted in culture that it gives Sam a flavor that I feel like really makes him relatable to regular people. Like you get to see him doing cooking and doing the kinds of things that real people do. And you get to see him feel uncomfortable when the police come. And we don't go crazy with it in that moment. You get to see him experience the world as a black man from the South. When the series begins, Bucky, we like to say this series began and each of the characters knocked on the door. We let them in. They walked in with their bags and put them down, right? When Bucky knocked on the door, there was a truck full of baggage. And that baggage has accumulated in all these Marvel movies and with all this Marvel mythology of a man who's been <laughs> manipulated. He's 106 years old. And because he's been manipulated, he doesn't belong to any given era, least of all this era. He's killed so many people. And the fact that he remembers every one of the murders makes him believe a part of himself was the Winter Soldier. And so you take all of that and the fact that he doesn't have any family left and the only person who ever truly accepted him for who he was, Steve, is gone. And we were like, it's such an immense thing for this kid, for this guy to tackle that we needed to come up with a storyline that was all of that baggage concentrated into one character that if Bucky could not find a way to make amends with him, he's going to fail as a human being. And if Bucky can find a way to be brave enough to confront this, even if the person does not accept it, he has a shot at being reborn as a human being who's not a monster and not what all that baggage uh, says he is. Overall strategy. Um, the, the, the chemistry that Sebastian and Anthony or Sam and Bucky have was there was a there's a moment everybody who's a Marvel fan remembers in Civil War when the two of them are in the car can you move the seat forward no I hate and in 12 seconds everybody knew from Kevin Feige to fans all around the world that these two had something special and it's crazy to think that in 12 seconds what they what these two men were able to do was so electric that everybody who worked on this project knew exactly what the tone had to be because it just was it's just it's just something that's sort of tran it's transcendent what those two guys have together and it dictated everything moving forward and the buddy cop i, I think one of the great things about the history of sort of buddy two-handers is that buddy two-handers have a long legacy of tackling issues of the moment and doing it in a way that's still fun for the audience while you, while being honest and not shying away from very, very relevant and sometimes hard hitting topics. But it's always digestible because it has this, you know, sort of electric back and forth fire and ice dynamic. When we meet John Walker, he has been the most decorated soldier maybe in U.S. history. And his expectation is that as he, if he continues being excellent, he will inevitably become a hero like the men and women he always set his sights on. But that expectation is born from a bit of privilege and a bit of arrogance. And his journey is going to be fraught and reshape him completely by the time it's done. Um, when we meet Sharon Carter, the funnest thing to do was to go back, watch Civil War, and imagine what this woman has had to do to survive all these years. And the Sharon Carter who walks through the door in this series is very, very different than the Sharon you saw before. She still looks super young. She still has that baby face. She still looks innocent, which makes it a little bit more striking when you start to see the edge and uh, uh, the habits and the attributes and the thorns she's picked up having to hustle since breaking the Sokovian Accords. And I think the best way to describe it is Sharon in this series is very, very grown up and very, very complicated. 
when we meet Zemo, um, I don't know if we can say where he's at. Well, we know where he's at, literally. He's in prison. And he's been in a capsule, and he's still unsatisfied with the fact that heroes levitated his city, slammed it into his country, and killed his family and everyone else, right? And he's been unable to pursue what he believes is his life mission, which is to dispatch heroes, because in his mind, hero is the same as supremacy. And there's no room for supremacists on this planet. So he, Zemo would tell you, I'm the real hero in this series, because I'm getting rid of the kind of people who do more damage than they do good.